Great, so welcome back. And this is question 13 called Roman to integer. Now for this question, we're given a, a table here and just indicates you know, the translation of a Roman numeral to a typical number. And so, oh, and so that's exactly what we're going to be doing with this question where we're given a string as our input and that'll be a string of Roman numerals. And we want to output here an integer value which you know, is the numerical translation of that string. And so we wanna handle kind of two different cases here. The first case is just the numbers themselves where we translate, for example, i three times is three, or here where you know, l is 50, v is five, and three i is equal three. And so that's just a straight up translation of the number. But then the other case is we want to handle when a smaller number precedes a larger number. And so since C is equal to 100 and M is equal to 1000, then since a C precedes its larger number, then we'll subtract the smaller number from the larger number to get 900. Same thing with XC where it's 90, so 100 minus 10 and 5 minus 1 here. So when a smaller number precedes a larger number. But in this case, since m is larger than c, we just take the straight up value of m, which is 1,000, which you know, is identical to all these cases. So l is greater than v, v is greater than i, and then these are all equal to each other. So you just take out their straight up values. Now, typically to perform this translation, I find a lot of the solutions in the discussion page uses a hash map, but if you actually use a switch case, you do get some performance enhancements. It's actually a little bit faster than your typical hash map, especially since you're dealing with such a small set of values. So I already went ahead and wrote it out just uh, in a method here called translate. And we're just keeping it private since we're simply using it in this method here. And so, yeah, the switch case does exactly what you think it would, you know, if it's I, we're returning one, V, five, et cetera. And so as we're iterating through this list of, or these characters, character by character, we'll be calling upon this translation method to get the you know, integer value of it. So we'll go ahead and write a variable called sum, which we'll be returning at the end of our method. And so this will be you know, incrementing each iteration with the translated value. And so we'll also want to actually add a value representing the current number that we're looking at or the current Roman numeral. And so that'll be equal to the translation of the current character, which will be at index zero, not character at zero. And so next we'll be iterating through that list of, or that uh, string there, character by character. So we'll put i equal to one, since we already looked at the first value. And then we'll be doing i plus plus, since we're iterating by one each loop. And then finally, we just wanna do this while i is less than the length of the string. And so now we'll also want to add the next value that we're looking at. And so that will be the same thing here, except we'll be looking at the character at i. Okay, so this will be used so we can compare the current value that we're looking at and the, and the following value to see is the current value greater than the value that comes after it. And so to do that, we'll just have an if statement here. Just move me up. So if the current value is less than the next value, just wrap that in brackets, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract the sum by the current value. And so that would be like in this case where we see C here, and since C is less than M, we'll subtract 100. And then when we get to M, we'll be adding 1,000, which you know, all in all, it's 900. Great, so next we'll do an else, and then we'll be adding 
the current value otherwise, which handles the case where, okay, M is good, so we'll add 1,000 here. Or I guess that would be more like this case. And so next, what we we'll wanna do is just set our current equal to our next, so that each iteration we're just setting the previous value. And then the final thing is there's usually an edge case, which there is in this case, where we'll add the current value to our sum. Great. So just to double check, I think that looks good. Go ahead and run that and submit. All right, so I hope that helped. It's a, it's a very performant solution. You know, it's faster than 92% of other submissions. So um, I really suggest using that switch case whenever you can use it. And uh, yeah, so some, some of this logic is a little finicky like this edge case here of adding the current at the very end. And the, the main thing to get in your head is that you have to compare the any cases where the preceding value is less than the value that comes after it. And But all in all, that's just a simple if then else statement. So yeah, I hope that helped and good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thank you.